let's dive into the topic. Does creatine lead to water retention? I'm James Grage, and I'm your supplement industry insider. Everything that we're talking about today is based on these two papers right here, published by the ISSN, which is the International Society of Sports Nutrition, which is the foremost authority on sports nutrition and supplementation. Now, if we go to the science, it's no wonder there's confusion out there because not all of the research agrees on whether creatine leads to water retention. So where does the confusion in the research, where does that originally stem from? Well, probably comes from some earlier studies where participants were taking 20 grams of creatine a day. That could potentially lead to some water retention initially for the first few days. Well, why 20 grams? Well, that is your traditional loading protocol for taking creatine for the first time, or maybe you took a break and you're starting again, and you're trying to maximize creatine stores. So the protocol is taking a five gram serving four times a day, gives you your 20 grams, and you do that over the course of five to seven days and that is going to maximize creatine storage. Obviously, we're trying to do this in a very short period of time. Is this the only way to load creatine? No, it's just the fastest way to do it. So if you're concerned about water retention, we don't have to do 20 grams a day. We can actually do five grams one time a day over the course of 28 days and get the same creatine storage we would get with this traditional loading protocol. Now, some people may look at this and say, yeah, but I don't wanna wait 28 days to get the benefit of it. But here's something to keep in mind. Most of us, even in our normal diet, are getting about one to two grams a day of creatine naturally. And most of us are sitting somewhere between 60 to 80% saturation just based on our normal diet without any kind of supplementation. So by supplementing with creatine, we're actually just trying to maximize that creatine saturation, get that extra 20 to 40%. So this is a good alternative if you're concerned about unwanted water retention. All right, before we move on, let's clean this board real quick here. Now going back to what we were talking about before with this good kind of intracellular hydration or intracellular water retention, so we're gonna use some nerd words here. I'm a nerd, I like nerdy words. So creatine is what we call osmotically active. And all that really means is that creatine that's stored in the muscle is going to pull water into the muscle, leading to fuller muscles, but also potentially anabolic growth. Now the latest research indicates that creatine supplementation may enhance the muscle's ability to store glycogen. And all glycogen is, is the stored form of glucose. So in other words, take your creatine with your carbohydrates and you can store more glycogen in the muscle. More glycogen, that attracts water. So you get more water inside the muscle cell, this intracellular hydration that we talked about. That leads to a swelling, slight swelling of the muscle, which can be an anabolic signal that leads to muscle protein synthesis. In other words, building muscle. Now this process is often misunderstood, which leads to the misconception that creatine just leads to bloating or water retention. But on the contrary, this intracellular hydration may be a key player in both muscle growth and recovery. Now, even in the world of bodybuilding, there's always been this misconception that creatine leads to water retention. And this is why a lot of athletes will drop their creatine supplement the week leading up to a competition. But based on the latest research, this thinking may be very outdated. In fact, creatine supplementation may actually help some of these athletes in the carb up phase of their pre-contest diet, where they go from a carb deplete, where they have depleted their glycogen levels, and now they're carbing back up, trying to replenish glycogen levels and trying to fill out the muscle and pull some of that water intracellularly. Now recently, I even challenged this, a bit of a personal experiment. I did a bodybuilding competition where I did what you're not supposed to do. Took creatine all the way up until the day of the competition, 
didn't experience any sort of unwanted water retention, didn't have any kind of loss of muscle definition, and I felt like it really helped with my carb up as well. Muscles felt nice and full and round and vascular. So with that being said, that's not science, that's a science experiment of one as they say, but it certainly supports the science. But even as a sports nutritionist, I try not to speak just on my own personal experiences or opinions. I think it's very important that you rely on good, solid, evidence-based science. So to wrap up, any water retention from creatine is not only short-term, but mostly intracellular, which is beneficial for muscle growth. So in short, the myth of creatine causing unwanted bloat, that's just outdated thinking. With that said, we're gonna be covering other topics on creatine with this new insider series. So make sure you go ahead and subscribe, turn on notifications, not just in YouTube, but on your device as well. So you actually see the notifications and I will see you next video.